Have you ever shuddered at those videos of venomous or man-eating animals that roam Australia looking for unexpected foreigners to prey on? Have you ever swooned at the thought of extreme heat or being battered by tropical storms and flooding? Are you cringing at the thought of mullet-sporting locals who walk around in barefoot and talk a lingo that sounds familiar but you can barely understand? Do you know what a drop bear is? Well, if any of that puts you off moving to Australia, then we probably don't want you. Stay where you are, champ. Nice and safe. She'll be right. But these aren't the real reasons why you aren't moving to Australia in 2023. G'day guys, my name's Ross and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic. Since we started sharing our journey to the land down under, I've lost count of the number of people that we've helped and inspired to move here. And if you're watching this right now and you're thinking of moving, then well done. You're kind of nearly there, but there could be a few things holding you back from taking the plunge and changing your life forever. The first reason is that you're lazy. I get it. A lot has happened over the last few years. It's been traumatic. Getting off your backside and doing something about your life is hard. Okay, that's just me pandering to you lazy folk out there. The truth is, is that most of us are too lazy. You're the talkers. One day I'm gonna move to Australia and live my best life. Pfft, wasters. I was like that for a long time. Since I was 10 years old, I wanted to move to Australia. And I was 32 when I finally made the move. Or was I 33? can't remember. The point is, I was lazy for about 10 years of my adult life before I ever did anything about moving to Australia. I was a dreamer. Australia's aren't dreamers. They're doers. Sure, they have a laid back attitude and are pretty easy going, but they get the job done. Despite all the difficulties that they might face, Aussies battle through. So if you want to move here in 2023, don't put it off. Don't be lazy like I was and make sure that this is the year that you do something about it. Or it'll end up being like every other year that you haven't done anything. The next reason is that you're scared. Scared of the unknown. What is living in Australia really like? How different is your life going to be? Does it really all live up to the hype? Well, the answer is yes, kinda. Australia is so vast and so different and people are all unique. So how is anyone supposed to know if they'll like it any more than where they are now? Do you know what you need to do? Don't be a wuss about it. Go out there and find out for yourself. Australia pretty much has it all. The good, and the bad, and you need to remember that. If you're the type of person that wants to shy away from things, then you could fail in Australia, if you even get here at all. Hey, you don't need to be too out there either. Australians are gonna find a way to put you in your place pretty quickly too. But you need to have a bit of a sense of adventure and to know what you want. Maybe the only thing you're missing is a little bit of courage to go out there and get it. Because whatever you're looking for, you'll find it. And maybe something else that you weren't looking for too. I mean, good things, not like weird stuff. You can probably get that too if that's what you're into. No one's judging. It's 2023 after all. How much money is your new life gonna cost? Have you even got enough money to get your dreams off the ground? <laughs> That's another way of saying getting a flight. Dad jokes. And flights are expensive now. At least you only need a one-way ticket. To be fair, Australia is pretty expensive too. But this shouldn't be a barrier. I'm making all this sound really bad, aren't I? When we first moved to Australia, we thought that everything was expensive, especially the price of mushrooms and capsicums. But you know what happened? Yeah, prices kind of went up even more. I'm really not making this sound good, am I? But prices went up everywhere. Do you know what? This is a metaphor. In Australia, if you want something good, then you're going to have to spend some money, except if you're buying a cheap Chinese ute. If you want your dream life down under, then you're going to have to spend some money to get here. How much would you get if you sold all of your possessions? How much would you have if you just saved up some money? How long do you think you could go without some of the nice things so that you could live the life you've always wanted? People don't like to give up what they have or trade in what they've got for something that they don't know anything about. But I'm sure if you really looked at your finances, you'd probably find a way to get the money that you needed to start your new life. And let's face it, Australia is crying out for workers at the moment. So whatever money you do spend, you're probably gonna earn it back in bucketfuls when you get working here. I know traders can charge what they bloody want at the moment. Sounding good so far? Or have you already decided that Australia really isn't for you? Remember what I said, off you go champ. What's that? Oh, you don't know where to start? Yeah, that was kind of me too. So to live in Australia, you need a visa. And there are over a hundred of them. And they've all got weird little numbers that change from time to time. Some can be granted pretty much instantly. Others can take years. Most will allow you to enter and work here. Some will allow that indefinitely and a few will give you the golden ticket to permanent residency. Or if you feel like one passport at the airport isn't enough, 
then you could apply for an Aussie one too. If I was young again, I'd come on a 417 working holiday visa and take my chances and have a punt at the Australian dream. If I didn't like it, I'd go home, probably with slightly lighter pockets and a head full of memories. Good ones too. If it was just me and my wife, then maybe we'd look at a 482 temporary skills shortage visa and see if we could get nominated to work here by an employer. As it turns out, we waited until our early 30s, already had one very young child, and were fortunate enough to get a 189 permanent residency visa. We were one of the lucky ones, but that was only because my profession was on the skills list. But the only reason that we even found that out or were even able to start the process was because we used a visa agent. So if you want to find out what visa or visas are available to you, speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. They're one of Australia's most established Myra registered agents with hundreds of happy reviews from people who have all made the successful move to Australia. Tell them we sent you and you'll receive a free visa assessment where they will tell you your best options for your situation with no obligation. What is there to lose? All the details to contact them are in the description below. Maybe contacting them today will be the reason that you actually make the move in 2023. The last one is the big one and it's probably the main reason that's holding you back. No, it's not Eshe's, it's your family. I mean, not your immediate family, like the ones who would be going with you, but all the ones that you'd be leaving behind. When we moved, our eldest was about 18 months old and we knew that we wanted more. Taking your kids away from grandparents or pretty much moving them to the other side of the world is gut-wrenching. Family is everything, isn't it? So what do you do about it? Well, the fact is, it's 2023. Technology allows you to speak to them as frequently as whichever one bothers to stay up or get up early to FaceTime the other one. Chances are it's probably gonna be a bit of the two. The world is open again, kinda. And now when your family visits, or when you visit your family, it'll be quality family time, rather than just popping in for a quick chat, which you can now do over the phone, or dumping your kids off for some free childcare. I know that's important too. The truth is, not everyone is gonna be happy with your moving. You are going to let someone down. Are you living this life for you, your kids, your partner, or someone else? It won't be easy without them right there for you, and everything still is 24 hours away. But living on the other side of the world isn't so much of a barrier anymore as the people that made it over here 50 years ago on boats. Who are the people that are saying you shouldn't go? Have they ever even been to Australia? They say you should never take advice off people who haven't been through what you wanna go through. Most people do have positive experiences of living here. There are some that don't, but if you only ever talk to them, guess what? you're probably gonna stay living wherever you are currently living. And that's not a bad thing, it just is. I find as we get older, you just end up regretting the things that you didn't do, unless you've been in prison. Come to think of it, if you've been in prison, then moving to any country is kinda gonna be a bit difficult. Try and stay out of prison. That's not how you get to Australia anymore. And they don't like it when you talk about that. Or shrimps on Barbies. Or fosters. Which one of these reasons is stopping you move to Australia in 2023? Are there any that I've missed out? Tell me in the comments down below. And if you wanna know how Australian culture is different, we want to see me with a bit of a beard, saucy. Actually, it's not saucy. My wife said I look like a homeless person. Then watch this video. Catch you later.